you for a startup question. Uh, what are you doing in Barcelona? Why did you come well, to this uh, festival? Flat stock in the poster convention travels around to different uh, different festivals and has these sorts of things. And we're in Barcelona for this first time because they invited us to come. Uh, they do the same event at uh, Pitchfork Festival, which is sort of a sister uh, event in Chicago in the in the states. Um, so I would definitely take the opportunity to come with a poster group to Barcelona for the first time, which is lovely. And um, the biggest part is to help uh, educate the public that this kind of thing actually happens, um, not only in the States, but there's all these European artists that actually do the same thing. And uh, although it's far less well known, uh, that's the, the point of us coming here, a lot of the United States artists to come and just help support the idea that this happens on a broader scale than uh, even the local people know. They may not know that it's actually happening in their town. Um, and it's been very exciting for the people when we go to a new place when they see it for the first time it's like the early shows that we had when even the people in the states had never seen this all together as one large group and they wander by wide-eyed and don't necessarily kind of know what to, how, what to expect or what how to react to it so even though they may their shopping habits and their purchasing habits may not incline them to buy a lot of limited edition prints at a bit higher price than they may uh, be used to just seeing posters around their town, um, the reaction is fantastic. There's always, you know, wide-eyed uh, looks and looks of amazement and surprise to see what goes on and, uh, uh, and it definitely draws people in so that's hopefully something that will grow and uh, what has, has happened at other shows, they may get excited this time and not purchase a lot of things but if it's announced that this is going to happen next year again then they may be doubly, you know, doubly excited and, and uh, be inclined to come and uh, buy things or participate in things, or if nothing else, but to research more of what goes on uh, on the internet and see uh, just how broad and wide that it uh, actually is. Mm -hmm. Tell me maybe something in short about yourself and uh, your technique, what uh -huh. kind of post? Um, I come from Portland, Oregon in the U.S., and uh, Portland is a very uh, a town that's uh, very into art, very, very, very into music, um, so it's, it's kind of easy to have this kind of artwork supported there. Um, I'm an illustrator. I draw you know, most of mine completely by hand and uh, spend a lot of time pushing a pencil and, and uh, making sketches and building things from scratch. Um, and uh, uh, I've been doing this kind of thing probably about 25 years. Um, originally you start by doing little flyers for your favorite club and their, your favorite bands come and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Some of those bands who I've known for a great many years like uh, My Morning Jacket I've known since they were starting very very small um, and now as they've gotten bigger and bigger and bigger I've continued to work with them in doing you know world tours and Madison Square Garden and all kinds of you know bigger events and all that stuff and it's been nice to grow with bands your art grows, the band grows, and all that's good. Uh, and then feature new ones and, and learn new stuff and uh, meet other people. And, and uh, it's a very interesting working relationship when you try to bring your art and attach it to the meaning behind you know what bands try to bring through their music and the content, uh, you know what they sing about. Um, and I hand screen print every uh, every print is a color pulled by hand one at a time. So each print is made by hand. Uh, individually touched over and over and over and over again and in the end you have a, a product that's really uh, uh, results from hours and hours and hours of labor and a very very you know hands-on piece of work as opposed to just a digital printing process or something else like that and that's the charm of screen printed posters and that's the charm and we're trying to educate people about how precious they can be um, if we only print a hundred there's only 100 posters and for all of the world for all of time so that's harkens back to an earlier era of you know printing lithography and art reproduction that uh, has happened for hundreds of years but uh, now in context of music and contemporary music it has a different meaning than perhaps the plays of Toulouse-Lautrec uh, things that happened in Paris and Spain and France and, and uh, everywhere else hundreds of years ago there's mechanical reproduction and digital reproduction kind of killed off a lot of the the preciousness of what it is that uh, kind of we do again as a piece of artwork and not just a piece of advertising. So what kind of time is right now for the poster uh, designers and it's, uh, it's, this art? Uh, it's bigger and bigger and bigger all the time uh, and actually growing. yes it's been it's been growing for five or six years and uh, it's at the same time that 
something grows to the point where there's so much of it that it seems normal, it's really still growing and growing. Um, as it is, it was uh, not precious, and then in the middle it's like very interesting to everyone. And now, a great many bands and a great many uh, musical management agencies are realizing that it's a very uh, precious part of the, exp the whole experience. Because they'll use it for advertising, and then they'll actually use it for merchandise to sell to people. People can take that home as a memory of the experience they had with the band for that particular night in their hometown or the show that they saw it at. Um, and it gets bigger and bigger, but it, and it's starting to become ingrained into the whole musical experience. And as we all know, anything that is, you know, embraced by an industry starts to become uh, part of the industry. And uh, a little bit, um, the artist, the artist can be lost in the in the process a little bit when they start expecting. We need posters. We need posters, and they may not necessarily be paying as much attention as they used to about. Uh, just the sheer preciousness of it. It's seen more as a uh, part of the industry, you know. So we try to remind them sometimes not to be, <laughs> not to be so, uh, yes. Uh, what kind of, of reactions do you get from the band when they see your posters? You said that you are friends with the, my mom. Yeah, and sure. Well, we talk a lot about it as the process grows. Once upon a time, they were always surprised when they would get the product and they would just be, you know, hooray. Uh, and then now sometimes they go, ooh, can you, can you make a chickens on the posters? So by the time they see it, they've seen it three or four or five times because they see the sketch, they see the process of it, and then they see the end result. So sometimes they're a little bit less surprised, and sometimes they're very surprised. So it's all sometimes still as amazing as it ever was, and sometimes, again, part of the industry part is they don't want to be surprised by it. They want to know what it is that they're going to be offering to the public. And then sometimes that takes a little, a little of that excitement spark away from the entire process. But sometimes it's work, sometimes it's love, sometimes the two go together. Yeah. Tell me the story about Caio's uh, poster. Uh, years and years ago, back when I was starting to do uh, flyers and posters, uh, I, in, back in St. Louis, Missouri, I did a lot of flyers and posters for the bands that would come to the clubs I frequent. And of course, when Caius's records started coming out, I was a huge fan. And uh, that night at the show, we hung out and uh, drank beers and talked a lot and enjoyed the show and it was very good. Uh, and then so years later, they you know all their records come out and everything is great. And then they went away, of course, as the uh, you know the other bands came and, and uh, so when they announced that their tour was happening, I uh, arranged to find a contact to uh, get a hold of them and just wrote a story about that night that we spent years and years ago. Uh, and. Uh, he was incredibly gracious. A few days later, a phone rings, and it's like, hey, guy, it's uh, John Garcia from Caius Lives. How's it going? And uh, he actually wanted to make sure that he wasn't uh, sort of a, a, a jerk or difficult to, to talk to years before, and he wasn't, and reassuring him that maybe in, in the things that he might have forgotten uh, and too much drink or too much everything else. Um, but I had wanted to do a poster for my hometown just because the event was coming and I would have loved to have done it. And, uh, and he said, yeah, sure, uh, we love all your artwork, it's really great. Uh, why don't you just do the whole uh, North American tour? And it was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, nice. I know that there's a lot, every city has an artist just like me. And when they see Caius Lives coming to town, they would say, oh, I want to do the poster. So I felt a little bad taking the job away from every city, uh, but screw them. I, uh, I, yeah, I, so I was very happy to do it. And he was the nicest guy in the world and uh, very easy to work with and uh, very down to earth and, and settled in the, yeah, it was very easy, he was super cool. Went to the show, you know, backstage passes, and he was very, everything was great, the show was great. And I was thrilled enough to do it. And he said, he talks about, um, you know, we'll do something again in the future, which would be fine. And if it doesn't, it's fine too, because I had a wonderful experience.